record. Without objection. Mr. President. Senator from Arizona. You know, the, uh, my friend, the senator from Illinois, who I see back on the floor, uh, who I, uh, for the record, the uh, senator from Illinois and I entered the House together back longer ago than we like to mention, particularly to those who favor term limits. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, we've had our philosophical disagreements, but um, I have appreciated his leadership. I have appreciated his honest approach to the issues, and uh, we obviously have significant disagreements. But those disagreements have been respectful, and I look forward uh, during the next whatever period of time is till we had dispense with the issue of health care reform and the issue of DOD appropriations in uh, discussing this issue with him. Uh, the senator from Illinois has been saying the Republicans are holding up funding for our troops by not conceding to an immediate vote on the defense appropriations bill after the House sent it to the Senate. Um, I understand that, and I understand his zeal to get on to other issues, which are the job of the majority is to <clears throat> get legislation passed. But I'd like to point out the real facts here. The real facts about the defense appropriations bill are that the House passed its version on July 30th, last July 30th. The Senate passed its version on October 6th. By my calculation, that's well over two months ago. For over two months, for over two months, this bill, all they had to do then, of course, was go to conference and report it out to the floor of the Senate, something that could have been done in 24, 48 hours. Instead, over two months has gone by, and the Democratic leadership in both the House and Senate held this bill for the troops captive. Now, why would they do that? Because they knew that at the end of the year, they would stuff unrelated, must-pass legislation which has nothing to do with the Department of Defense or the men and women in the military, that they would have to put that in so that they could get it passed. So we have a number of additional pieces of legislation stuffed into the bill which the Democratic leadership knew had to be passed. So I say in all due respect to my friend and colleague from Illinois, he and I, as I mentioned, have been around here the same amount of time, and the fact is, that after the House and Senate both passed their bills, over two months ago, they could have brought it to the floor and we could have debated it and, of course, passed it into law. So now we have the Secretary of Defense, Defense calling around to people saying, we've got to pass this immediately. Where was the Secretary of Defense, who I admire and respect, on October the 7th? 2009, after the Senate passed its bill. Where was he then urging members to not harm the men and women who are serving in the military? Well, the fact is, and I'll get a minute uh, from my staff, that the bills that are stuffed into this, which have nothing to do with our nation's defense and have everything to do with the agenda of the Democratic majority. And I want to say again to, to my friend from Illinois, I understand that. I understand why you are doing what you're doing. But I don't understand why you're blaming us when after two months that the bill has not been passed. Now, let me, let me just add, there's a portion of the bill called Division B, quote, other matters. And only, only in the United States Senate could we call it, quote, other matters. But let me tell you what they have larded on to the defense bill. Food stamps. Food stamps, very necessary. Is there anybody going to be against food stamps? Of course not. Extends appropriations for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program in the USDA. Food Stamps Administration, $400 million in emergency funds through September 30th, 2011. Satellite Home Viewer Act extension. Now, perhaps the senator from Illinois, my friend, can tell me what Satellite Home Viewer Act extension has to do with defending our nation. Now, I know it has a lot to do with the ability of uh, uh, millions of Americans to watch NFL football, but I don't think it has a lot to do 
with defense spending. Patriot Act extension. Section 1004 provides a clean two-month extension until February 28, 2010 of the three Patriot Act provisions expiring at the end of this calendar year. Um, now, that has to do with investigation of business records and also roving fire taps, uh, wire taps. Now, is there anyone that didn't know that the Patriot Act was going to expire? It, it was, was the senator from Illinois unaware that we needed to uh, extend the Patriot Act? Most people believe that we do. We still have extremist uh, organizations that want to attack the United States of America. Flood insurance extension extends the flood insurance program through February 28, 2010. Small business extension uh, of $125 million for the Small Business Administration to continue offering reduced fee and higher cap loan guarantees under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act extends the higher limits through February 28, 2010. Further designates such amounts as emergency spending, i.e., it's not included in the budget. But that's an uh, argument for another day. But the point is, here, again, what? Small businesses are vital. Small businesses are what's been ignored. Small businesses are the reason why the stimulus package has failed because it's done a great job for Wall Street. Boy, these bonuses, 16, 18 billions of dollars are gonna be distributed, but they're gonna have a Merry Christmas up on Wall Street at Goldman and Morgan and all those places. It's gonna be great, thanks to the stimulus, thanks to the TARP and the stimulus package, but where is it on Main Street? Where's Main Street where we have 10% unemployment? So of course we need to try to help small businesses. They haven't done much so far, I'll tell you that. And I'll take you to my state, and I'll take you all over this country outside of Manhattan, and they'll tell you that small businesses are hurting very badly. But we couldn't do that before. We had to put it on to the Defense Appropriations Bill. So we also have payment for North Carolina construction project. Now here's, now here's something that really has a lot to do with defending the nation. It provides a $12.8 million appropriation for a construction project in North Carolina, of which, note designation of the state, of which four million will be obligated immediately and the rest will be available 120 days after the signing of an agreement between the federal government and several local authorities. This is paid through, for through rescission of funds previously appropriated for this project. I don't know what the project is, I say to my colleagues, but I'm not sure that it, we're in dire need. In addition, Highways extension, section 1008 extends the authority for the Highway Trust Fund to make and receive payments through February 28. It also provides 33.4 million for administrative expenses paid for out of the earlier rescission from the Highway Trust Fund. Now, I, I am one who believes that we need to make sure the Highway Trust Fund is funded and that we move forward with the highways. But again, what does that have to do with defending this nation, not a lot. Unemployment insurance extension. Here we are again. Extends the authority of expiring federal unemployment insurance programs and benefits through February 28, 2010, continuing the current availability of up to 99 weeks of total unemployment. Of course, we have to expend, extend unemployment. Unemployment, except up on Wall Street, is at 10% in my home state of Arizona, real unemployment is 17%. So in addition to that, in addition to that, I guess the conferees were beavering away by adding earmarks, and plenty of them. In fact, 1,720 earmarks, totaling $4.3 billion, $2.5 billion in unauthorized and unrequested C-17s. No one outside of those who are contractors believes that we need to spend two and a half billion dollars unauthorized C-17s, which cost two and a half billion dollars, 500 million in unrequested and unwanted funding for the Joint Strike Fighter, alternative engine, and presidential helicopter. That's 7.3 billion dollars. 18 billion dollars in new non-offset funding 
for food stamps, unemployment assistance, COBRA benefits, physician payments, the so-called doc fix, and small business lending. By designating the funding as a, quote, emergency, none of it's paid for. It's just another $18 billion of money that will laid, be laid on our children, debt that will be laid on our children and grandchildren, and our national debt in 2010. I guess some Americans wonder why we're going to have a debt for this year of $1.5 trillion, trillion, T, trillion. Someone said to me that, as several times been said to me, we hope that the president never learns what comes after a trillion. So here we are, another $18 billion of funny money. And so, so here we are with the bill passed by the Senate two, and two, hour, two months and 10 days ago and passed by the House a month be, months before that. And so clearly one can only assume well, let me put it this way. One would question why, if the Senate passed its version on October 6th, the House passed its version on July 30th, then why would we wait until December the 16th to bring it to the floor of the Senate? Now, one might conjecture that they didn't bring it to the floor of the Senate because they knew that it was going to have to be passed by the Congress of the United States. Of course we are going to pass it. And yet this is, so this is the best opportunity to add these programs and projects that would never otherwise be uh, passed. So here we are with a, with a legislation the, to take care of the men and women in the military and our national security needs, and we have loaded it up with $7.3 billion in pork, $18 billion in new offset funding, which is not paid for. And so then my friend and colleague from Illinois comes to the floor and says, Republicans are holding up the passage of this bill, even though even though the Senate passed this bill on October the 6th. Would the Senator yield for a question? I'll be more than happy to engage in a colloquy with my friend from Illinois if he re re would request to do so or, or question, either way. I just have a brief question. I, when we were here at 1 a.m. blurry-eyed voting <laughs> and there were two unanimous consent requests made to pass the Department of Defense appropriation bill immediately, does the senator from Arizona requ uh, remember that the objections to passing the bill immediately so we could get the money to the troops came from his side of the aisle when we tried to pass this bill? I, I do recall that, I say to my friend. And I also recall that I was only allowed 10 minutes, 10 minutes to talk about this bill and the 1,720 year marks, the uh, telescope that in Hawaii, the, uh, I got uh, some list over here. I was allowed 10 minutes. I need a long time to talk about this. And if, and if, if the Democratic majority, which is their right, wants to wait until December 17th and then jam it through in the middle of the night, that's their right to try, to try it. But we need to talk more about uh, why the American people are angry. $18.9 million to defend the nation, to defend the nation, $18.9 million for a center at the University of Massachusetts, quote, dedicated to educating the general public, students, teachers, new senators, and Senate staff about the role and importance of the Senate. Now, I really hope that this, uh, this, this uh, organization at the Center for University of Massachusetts would somehow come into being perhaps not with taking it out of money for defense, but if there's ever a time that the American people need to understand the role and importance of the Senate, given our approval rating is about 4%, and I haven't met any of them, I understand why someone would want to have a center to teach new senators and Senate staff about the role and importance of the Senate. 
about 18.9 million bucks when people are not being able to stay in their homes, when they're unemployed, when they can't feed their families, when unemployment is 17 percent, sure, add it on to the defense appropriations bill. That's the way to do it. 500,000 for my old favorite, the old brown tree snake program. I totaled up the millions one time that have been spent on the old brown tree snake program. And of course, historical Fort Hamilton Community Club, that needs a million $800,000, the old historical Fort Hamilton Community Club. I'm sure it's a nice place to visit. I'm sure it's, it's great to have 1.6 million to study human genetics at the Maine Institute for Human Genetics and Health in Brewer, Maine. $3.5 million for a microalgae biofuels project in Hawaii. $5 million for the Presidio Heritage Center, a museum in San Francisco. $1.6 million for the Center for Space Entrepreneurship. I think that would match up with the $2.9 million that we appropriated on the previous bill to study surgery in outer space. I'm telling you, the Trekkies are really happy about these appropriations bills. The $1.6 million for Virtual Business Accelerator for the Silicon Prairie, 7.8 million to develop key technologies needed for the long-term operations in near space conditions. For the, so we got surgery in outer space and key technologies needed for near space conditions for the Orion High Altitude Long Endurance Risk Reduction Effort, the Aurora Flight Sciences in Columbus, Mississippi. 2.4 million for fusion goggle system. $800,000 million, $800, for advanced tactical laser flashlight in Wyandotte, Michigan. $10 million for the Hawaii Technology Development Venture. Now, my friends, here's this is kind of a classic example, and I, will, I see my friend and colleague on, on the floor, Senator Coburn, a man of, of courage and integrity, and uh, one who I think has led, in many ways, this fight. But here's a, here is a earmark in this bill. It's never been authorized, never had a hearing. $10 million for the Hawaii Technology Development Venture. What could that be? What could that be? Did we ever have a hearing? Did we ever have a depiction of this? Did we ever have it? No, it's stuck in, stuck in by the, uh, by the appropriators. $3.9 million for intelligent decision exploration. Now, if there's ever a place that needed that, it, it must be, in my view, the United States Congress. $3.9 million, million for intelligent decision exploration. I think that, frankly, the results of that exploration would be rather bleak. $2.3 million for marine species. $2.4 million for NAVAIR high fidelity oceanographic library. The list goes on and on and on. Oh, here's Hawaii again. Strange how Hawaii pops up. Two million dollars for an advanced laboratory for information integration naturally in Hawaii. Um, 1.2 million dollars for the model for green laboratories and clean rooms project. Now again I want to point out, as my colleague uh, from Oklahoma has, that these may be very worthwhile projects. They may be projects that maybe help America. Maybe spending our defense dollars, 5.8 million of it, for the Rock Island Arsenal roof replacement in Rock Island, Illinois, is something that's badly needed. Maybe the $800,000 for the natural gas fire tube boiler demonstration at the Rock Island Arsenal is also uh, very necessary. But how are we to know? How are we to know? So it's, it's the, the senator from Illinois and the Democratic leader have come to the floor and saying the Republicans are blocking passage of vitally needed funding for the men and women in the military who are defending our nation as we speak. My response is, where were you for the last two months after the Senate passed this bill, the Senate and the House could have had a conference and we could have had this bill long ago. And the fact is that it's been loaded up with food stamps, Satellite Home Viewer Act extension, Patriot Act extension, flood insurance extension, small business extension, payment for a construction project, highways extension, unemployment 
uh, insurance, COBRA extension, the old doc fix, the old doc fix that we do year to year, another chapter in profiles and courage on the part of the Congress, poverty adjustment freeze, rescission of DTV funds, uh, it goes on and on. What does that have to do with defense? What does that have to do with defending this nation? What does that have to do with giving the men and women who are serving in our armed services today in harm's way the best equipment, the best training, and the best uh, support we can provide them with? I see my colleague from Oklahoma on the floor. I yield the floor at this time. <clears throat> Thank you, Senator McCain. Mr. President. Senator from Oklahoma. Uh, 